afternoon, everyone. I am Deputy County Executive Maria White, and I am delighted to be with you this afternoon. I would like to welcome you all to the Birchfield Penny Art Center for the County Executive's fifth annual State of the County Address. As you know, the Poland Cars Administration greatly prioritizes funding for the arts and provides annual operating support to the Birchfield Penny as it is one of our region's cultural treasures. Today, I would like to thank the board and staff of the Birchfield Penny for hosting us this evening, as well as the county executive staff, who under the leadership of Jen Hibbett has organized this evening's event. Will you please join me in giving them all a round of applause? Thank you. Before we begin our proceedings, I would just like to ask a friendly reminder that you please silence your cell phones. Now, it is my great honor to introduce Captain Christopher Kennedy for the Pledge of Allegiance. Captain Kennedy is the commander of the Delta Company 401st Civil Affairs Battalion based in Tonawanda, and he is the Director of Operations at the Veterans One Stop Center. He is scheduled to deploy again in 2018, leading this team to Iraq. We thank Captain Kennedy for his service, and I ask that you all stand as we join with him in the Pledge of Allegiance. Captain? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next, I would like to introduce Rabbi Jonathan Fryrish from Temple Beth Zion. Rabbi Fryrish will lead us in an opening prayer this evening. Rabbi? Thank you so much. An honor to join you here this evening. What a great moment to celebrate all that we do here in Erie County. A few words, I promise I'll keep them short. Creator of all, you liberate and redeem. You give law and you set judgment. You are within all of us, and we seek to uncover your wisdom together to bring blessing on our republic, which you greatly helped call into being, and your love sustains even to this day. May America and our county remain loyal to the principles of the Declaration of Independence and apply them to all areas of our lives. Keep us from all manner of oppression and persecution unjust discrimination, save us from religious, racious, and racial and class conflict, preserve our country as a haven of refuge for the victims of injustice and misrule. Instruct us in the art of living together, teach us to respect differences, to reconcile clashing interests, and to help one another achieve a harmonious and abundant life. Give us the wisdom to choose honest and capable leaders, like one here, who will govern us according to your law of righteousness. Bless all of us and the enterprise of we, the American people, that we may utilize the resources of the land for the good of everyone. May our nation be ever receptive to new revelations of truth in science and philosophy, ever sensitive to the appeal of beauty in nature and art, ever responsive to the call of duty and the spirit of religious consecration and worship. And may Americans and our citizens of Erie County so love our country and our area that we withhold no sacrifice required to safeguard our lives and our region and to fulfill its promise. And let us say, oh, come on, let us say, Amen. man, I'm in the wrong church. <laughs> Thank you, Rabbi Fryrish. And finally, to begin this evening's important civic tradition, I would like to welcome to the stage President and CEO of Erie County Medical Center, Thomas Quattrochi. Please join us now in welcoming Tom. Thank you, Maria. Uh, good evening. 
and thank you for attending today. Uh, as a lifelong Western New Yorker, it's an honor to be with you this afternoon as we welcome together the annual State of the County Address from County Executive Mark Polencars. In my time at ECMC, I've had the opportunity to see Mark work on behalf of the residents of Erie County and have been honored to work with him most recently on ECMC's borrowing for the new state-of-the-art emergency department to continue to provide the quality care that our community deserves. I'd also like to thank the county legislature for approving the declaration of need for this project. Mark clearly understands both the need for their new emergency department and the unique, leader, the unique relationship that the county and the hospital has with the county. He never stopped working in the best interests of the patients and the community. In this specific case, as with many other issues that have come before him, Mark makes practical decisions. They're able to find common ground and serve his constituents, the people of Erie County. He, may, he works to create partnerships, build consensus, and promote a common vision. It's that type of leadership that has served us all so well in the past five years, and in many ways has been instrumental in building a better Erie County. Make no mistake, we have challenges and we have issues. But as a community, we will face them head on, and our county executive, as well as our county leadership, will work to do what's best for our, the residents of Erie County. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you the eighth county executive of our great Erie County, Mr. Mark C. Polenkars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Tom Petrochi, for that gracious introduction and the work that you do every day to ensure ECMC, our region's only level one trauma center, is the best it can be. Thank you, Tom. I also thank you, Tom, as well as the ECMC Board of Trustees for your steadfast commitment to ensuring ECMC does not become a financial albatross to the county. Working together, we found a way to assist ECMC build its new state-of-the-art emergency department in a manner that benefits all, the hospital, the county, and most importantly, our community. And I thank you for doing so. Thanks, Tom. I also wish to thank Captain Christopher Kennedy, who led us in the Pledge of Allegiance and wish you Godspeed in your next deployment overseas. On behalf of the county, as well as the country, I thank you for your service. Thank you very much. Thank you to Rabbi Jonathan Fryrich for your words of encouragement and your prayer for wisdom. We can all learn from the messages of compassion, caring, and community from the good books of the past. In many ways, we need them no, now more than ever before. Thank you, sir. I also thank my fellow elected leaders for being here, as well as the members of my cabinet who so ably serve the people of our great community every day. Thank you very much. Uh, to those in attendance, and we have a full house, thank you for all being here. And those watching at home, whether it be on Spectrum News or Facebook Live, thank you. I do appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to participate in this important tradition. It is my honor to come before you tonight to present my fifth State of the County address, and it is a pleasure to be here at the Birchfield Penny Arts Center. Erie County is proud in supporting the Birchfield Penny, and I know our community is a better place as a result of having institutions like this one call Erie County home. With the neighboring H.H. Richardson complex undergoing a renaissance, there is a growing excitement around this campus. There is also more excitement around Erie County than we've seen in many decades. Job growth is up while unemployment is down. Investments in new business are up while requests for tax breaks are actually down. More services are being delivered while county taxes remain low. We are a great place for business. We are fulfilling government's core mission of providing the programs and services that our residents demand and expect. We are a compassionate community that cares, and as a result, the state of Erie County is strong. 
Thank you. Here's some of what we've been able to accomplish in the last year since I gave a State of Accounting county address. As was announced last month, the county, through the ECIDA, and with the help of Governor Cuomo in New York State, will be purchasing 147 acres of prime land at the former Bethlehem Steel site to convert it to a high-tech 21st century industrial park. With direct access to three forms of transportation, highway, rail, and port, and guaranteed participation in the state's 2017 Brownfield Cleanup Program, this property represents some of the most attractive industrial land in North America. By acquiring this land and redeveloping it for new uses, we are building a history, or excuse me, we are building a legacy project that will rewrite the property's history. And it is a history I know well. My father worked there for decades. At its peak, approximately 25,000 people worked for Bethlehem Steel, and thousands more worked in jobs that supported the plant. Lackawanna was a boom town. Famed columnist Walter Winchell once said, I'd rather be mayor of Lackawanna, New York, than president of the United States. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and then the plant started shutting down, and jobs disappeared. By the time I graduated from high school, what was once a behemoth of industry was becoming a rusted hulk of dashed dreams. Now, the story is changing. With this acquisition of property and the investment of nearly $8 million in public infrastructure, a new 21st century industrial park will rise on the site, setting the stage for the next generation of advanced manufacturing jobs in this community. What was once populated by smokestacks and heavy, dirty industry will join Riverbend in Buffalo and the Riverview Solar Technology Park in Tonawanda as the latest in high-tech green sites for commercial use. As part of the overall redevelopment plan, we will be relocating rail tracks along Route 5 that impede access to the site, building a public road to open up the land for redevelopment, and extending the shoreline trail along Route 5 between Buffalo and Hamburg. These actions will result in tremendous new access to the Bethlehem site for businesses, as well as our re residents' recre recreational use of the trail. Thank you to Tecumseh to Redevelopment Incorporated, the owner of the vast majority of the Bethlehem Steel site, for being a willing partner in the sale, and also for agreeing to donate a portion of the land along Route 5 to be used as an extension of the shoreline bike and walking trail. Thank you, Tecumseh. <laughs> While this was a big goal of mine when I took office as county executive, I certainly did not do it alone. Thank you to the members of the legislature who have unanimously supported this project from the very beginning, as well as my fellow board members at the ECIDA. Without their support, the acquisition of and improvements to the site would not be possible. I also thank Deputy County Executive Maria White, who is leading the negotiations with Tecumseh, and her team comprised of Ken Swanenkamp, Chris Pawinski, Andrew Federick, and Kristen Wilder from Erie County, and ECIDA's John Capolino and its lawyers at Harris Beach. This project is a game changer for our region. Thank you all for your good work. Once we own the land, we'll move forward with the innovative Net Zero Energy Manufacturing Building that will feature over 125,000 square feet of leasable commercial space housed in a facility powered by solar, geothermal, and wind energy. This building will produce as much energy as it consumes and help power our economy through the new jobs that are created there. I thank my fellow board members at the ECIDA for supporting this innovative project and Steve Weathers and his team at the IDA for the work they have done to shepherd it through. Thank you very much. Another positive step for the local economy occurred at Erie Community College North's campus in Amherst. Recently, the construction of the new STEM building on ECC's North Campus took a big step forward with the final steel beam being placed. This $30 million investment in ECC represents a significant commitment on the part of New York State, which is contributing half of the amount, as well as Erie County, which is contributing about $10 million towards the construction and the purchase of equipment and fixtures for the building. This project reinvigorates the college 
The building will house cutting-edge STEM courses that are necessary to succeed in today's work environment. I thank the ECC Board of Trustees for their work in seeing this project through and congratulate ECC President Jack Quinn for his efforts to make this project a reality. I also thank Jack and the Board for agreeing with my request at last year's State of the County to create a joint county-college task force to address the common issues we face. The task force has met multiple times, and its work is already starting to pay dividends as both entities have a greater understanding of the mutual issues that confront us. Now, as you may have heard, Jack will be retiring after the semester. Jack Quinn has served our community in many capacities over the years, a teacher, town leader, congressman, and now ECC's president. The STEM building will be part of Jack's legacy, and I thank you, Jack, for a lifetime of service that you've done for our community. Thank you. This past year was a busy one for the Department of Public Works, and not just because of the STEM building. In 2016, we invested more than $57 million in road and bridge projects. 2016 projects were as diverse as the complete replacement of the Jameson and Girdle Road bridges in Elma, the construction and opening of the popular Tonawanda Rails to Trails project, the repaving of Old Lakeshore Road in Hamburg, Whitehaven and Baseline Roads on Grand Island, and Lawson Road in Cheektowaga. We also replaced the Brooklyn Street Bridge at Akron Falls Park and repaired the Berg Road Bridge in West Seneca, as well as repaved the entire road from Lackawanna to Orchard Park, and that's just to name a few of the projects. Don't let anyone tell you that the county's not investing in its road and bridge infrastructure. In fact, during the past four years, we have invested more than $225 million in our road and bridges, addressing a total of 1,010 of 2,400 lane miles of roads. Folks, that's equivalent of the distance from Buffalo to Topeka, Kansas. Thank you. Erie County has more lane miles of roads than the states of Delaware, Rhode Island, and Hawaii each have. My administration's commitment to protecting our infrastructure continues today, and we will continue to work with the legislature to prioritize and properly fund our infrastructure projects. Now here's an accomplishment you have not heard before. At the same time we've increased our investment in roads, we have decreased the county's total outstanding debt by a lot. In fact, when I took office, the county's long-term debt was nearly $417 million. By the end of this year, Total debt will have been reduced to $33 million, a reduction of nearly 20%. That is why when Fitch Ratings gave the county, or rated us last year, they gave the county a AAA rating regarding our long-term liability burden and an A-plus rating in full. Considering the county's bond rating when I came into office as Comptroller in 2006 was just above junk bond status, I have to admit, it feels really good to be rated A-plus today. Thank you. Thank you to all my partners in government who made it happen. When it comes to our parks and green spaces, this past year was a big one regarding our investments as well. At the Botanical Gardens, Erie County invested $3.5 million to rebuild greenhouses two and three, and the houses were reopened to the public this past January to rave reviews. The county also acquired 10 acres of land adjacent to the Seneca Bluffs Natural Habitat Park and completed more than $3 million in habitat restoration work at our natural habitat parks along the Buffalo River. We were able to complete this habitat restoration under a grant received from the EPA's Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. The Great Lakes Restoration Initiative has been a tremendous success. Unfortunately, as you may have heard, the program is proposed to be cut in full by the Trump administration budget blueprint. I hope you will join me in calling on Congressman Brian Higgins and Congressman Chris Collins to do all that they can to ensure that this needed important program stays because it is doing so much good for not only our community, but many others. So please join me in asking them to fight for the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. Now, while some propose cuts to needed programs that promote our environment, here, we will start a new one, the Passport to Parks program. As you leave here today, you'll receive your passport. I already have mine, and soon our constituents will be able to get their passport at our parks to do, too. 
The passport will open up a whole new world of fun and education in our parks. With your passport, you will not only learn about each of our historic parks, but can use the passport to attend educational events with our park rangers, where our youngest constituents can become junior park rangers. So I hope everyone takes advantage of this new free program offered by the Erie County Parks Department, your passport to Erie County Parks. While we take pride in the improvements we've made across Erie County, we've also taken steps to address problems ravaging our community, like the opiate epidemic. Erie County leads the way nationally in responding to the opiate epidemic. Our departments of health and mental health have played lead roles in addressing this crisis. They've hosted educational seminars for doctors, trained more than 15,000 persons to administer Narcan, identified and approved more treatment options, and helped Governor Andrew Cuomo draft appropriate state legislation to attack this crisis. Erie County has taken the lead when others hoped the crisis would go away. As part of the effort, our Erie County Opiate Task Force recommended creating a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week hotline for addicts and their families. And that's what we did last year, placing help just a phone call away for individuals and families who are in need. As of today, there have been 1,719 calls to the hotline. To give you a sense of what that number means, in Suffolk County, which has about 500,000 more people than we do, and a commensurate high rate of addiction, their addiction hotline received 516 calls since April of 2016, and they consider their hotline a great success. It's been in place for a longer period, and they have one-third of our calls. In Erie County, more than 90% of the individuals who called our hotline and were scheduled for in-person assessments successfully found treatment. Our program is a success, and many lives have possibly been saved from it across Erie County. I thank the members of the local task force as well as the legislature for supporting this worthy endeavor. For the past year, I've had the honor of serving on the National Opiate Task Force, working alongside colleagues from across the nation to get to the root of the opiate crisis and develop ways to fight back. I am proud to say, Erie County has not only implemented almost every one of the task force recommendations, but many of our programs were included in the final report. Now recently, my administration filed a lawsuit against 11 opiate manufacturers and four of their paid representatives. These companies and individuals knew opiates were highly addictive and could in fact kill, but they advertised them as a safe, non-addictive alternative for pain management. They reaped huge profits from the sale of opiates. Now, they need to be held responsible for the deaths they sowed in our community and the costs to address this nightmare. We are holding them responsible. I have spoken to the families of those who have died as well as those suffering from addiction. I have heard their cries. We are a compassionate community that cares. As long as I am your county executive, we will never perform a cost-benefit analysis on saving people's lives, and Erie County will never turn its back on people in need. Thank you. Thank you. To ensure the health of our community, the county has led in other areas as well, such as addressing the dangers of, well, lead. My administration led the way in committing $3.75 million over five years in enhanced funding to fight lead poisoning in Erie County. Lead poisoning is an insidious disease that can cause permanent neurological damage, destroying a child's future, and it takes a community-wide effort to tackle the issue. I thank the legislature for supporting this worthy initiative in both 2016 and 2017. As a result, we are inspecting and remediating more homes, thereby protecting more children. We have partners in government in the private sector who are attacking this issue too. I specifically thank Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown and the members of the city's common council for the actions they have taken recently to reduce lead exposure in Buffalo and work in partnership with Erie County to fight lead. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, members of the Common Council. Now, we are not doing it alone. 
We also thank the Community Foundation for Greater Buffalo, Belmont Housing Resources for Western New York, Jericho Road Ministries, Housing Opportunities Made Equal, and others for their advocacy on the anti-lead efforts. I also have to thank Congressman Brian Higgins for his great leadership on this issue by securing a number of federal grants to address lead poisoning, and Senators Chuck Schumer and Kirsten Gillibrand for their assistance in procuring HUD funding to fight lead in our community. As a result of Erie's County, Erie County's commitment of the $3.75 million, I am proud to note our investment has leveraged an additional $3 million in lead hazard reduction demonstration funding and $400,000 in healthy home supplemental funding from the federal government. This is huge and just proves our investment in tackling this problem was a good one. Thank you. While we have accomplished much, there is work remaining to be done in other areas. For example, last year I called for the passage of a new ethics law. To put it mildly, Erie County's ethics laws are a mess. They need to be strengthened and completely rewritten. I'm heartened to see that just last week, Majority Leader Larigo clocked in a just slightly amended version of the ethics law proposed last year by the Majority Leader, the Minority Leader, Tom Lagerin, and myself. I support this new version of the legislation, and I call on the legislature to pass it as soon as possible. Let's show the people of Erie County that we are not like Washington and Albany. Let's get that reformed ethics, place, uh, ethics code in place now. <laughs> Another important law, but stuck in committee at the legislature, is a fair housing law. I called for it last year and legislators Burke, Grant, Lochran, Miller, Williams, and Savage jointly introduced it. It's a law that not only protects individuals from all forms of housing discrimination, but it gives our citizens an avenue of recourse against those who would violate it. April is Fair Housing Month in our nation, and it's about time we ensure fair housing for all of our residents. The law cannot be voted on because it's stuck in committee, and it requires a public hearing. The public deserves to know where legislators stand when it comes to protecting our residents against discriminatory housing practices. The people of Erie County put us in office to represent them and address their needs. This is a legitimate one. They are counting on us to work for them and build a county that's more equitable and inclusive. So I urge my fellow county leaders to recommit to doing the people's business. Let's get the fair housing and the ethics laws enacted in the next 30 days. Thank you. Thank you. In other areas, my administration is moving full steam ahead. For example, in June of 2013, my administration announced initiatives for a smart economy, a blueprint for development that envisioned new ways to grow our economy. Today, half of the original 64 initiatives are complete, and 28 of the original 32 are nearing completion. We've made tremendous progress investing in workforce development, advancing smart growth projects, creating an Erie County Green Team, reforming the ECIDA, and promoting Erie County's agricultural community through our newly created Food Policy Council and working towards building a new agricultural industrial park. While we work towards completion of the original Initiatives for a Smart Economy plan, I am proud to announce we will very soon release Initiatives for a Smart Economy version 2.0. Thank you. Thank you. As with the earlier plan, these new in initiatives will allow Erie County to lead or work collaboratively with partners, leveraging county assets and resources to work with others on goals that align with the Western New York Regional Economic Development Council's plans. In this way, we are strategically targeting local areas of need and focusing greater resources on them as we work to implement change. Here are some of the new initiatives. We will continue to work with our partners on planning for a new train station in Erie County, one that provides access to all while positively impacting our local economy. We will create a job training program for veterans to receive lead safe certification to do renovation, painting, and repair work on homes to prevent lead dust from poisoning children. This effort will build off of existing work in the Erie County Department of Health, 
and the Erie County Veterans Service Agency by bringing together job training for veterans and lead remediation work that is needed. That way, we can offer veterans a career and protect the health of some of our most vulnerable residents. To support principles of smart growth, I will establish a Division of Planning Advisory Board to provide the Deputy Commissioner of Planning and Economic Development the advice and counsel she needs to fully execute her duties under the Administrative Code. The Board will include a cross-section of community stakeholders who will work collaboratively to engage a broader spectrum of Erie County's development, conservation, and municipal interests in county planning processes and reviews. To keep our economy as robust as it can be, we must have a strong and available workforce for employers. And there's one initiative that will do just that. We must ensure that women are not only equally paid, but are trained and considered for jobs they might not have been before. What I'm talking about is developing and opening up for women middle skills jobs. Those jobs are those occupations that require more than a high school education, but less than a college degree. These occupations include truck drivers, welders, IT support specialists, and quality control inspectors. These jobs often pay a living wage and can serve as a stepping stone to a higher paying career. In the past, these jobs went exclusively to men. But as we know, women make up a majority of our population and they must be considered for these middle skills positions. Building on existing models, we can provide job training for young women through vocational education offered in high schools and the Erie BOCES program, as well as job training and apprenticeship programs specifically geared for post high school graduates seeking middle, middle skills opportunities. I thank Karen King, the Executive Director of the County Commission on the Status of Women for her work on this initiative. It will make a difference. Thank you, Karen. Now there are other initiatives we plan on including in version 2.0 of the initiatives for a smart economy, but truthfully I'm not sure they're going to be there in the long run due to the Trump administration's proposed elimination of all community development block grants. First, we do intend to invest in more villages and hamlets through the creation of a new smart growth fund to promote projects that enhance the centers of villages and smaller communities. This program is based off of the very successful smart growth fund in version 1.0 that finance streetscape and beautification products, uh, projects in communities as diverse as the cities of Tonawanda and Lackawanna, towns of Clarence, Brant, Grand Island, and West Seneca, and the villages of Akron, Depew, and Springville. It needs to continue. In conjunction with that, we will be continuing channeling resources towards the revitalization of downtowns and main streets across Erie County with a facade improvement program which will as assist business owners improve their business's appearance and stimulate economic activity. We also plan on continuing the competitive process to award funds to provide transportation to senior and low-income residents in our rural areas. The current rural transit service serves communities like Sardinia, Wales, Collins, and Newstead, just to name a few. It is a good program that helped more than 1,600 residents in 2016 alone. It needs to continue. However, all three of these initiatives I just mentioned are dependent on the Federal Community Development Block Grant Program still existing. When people hear of the CDBG program, they immediately think it assists the city resident and the city residents only. In fact, the program assists communities everywhere if it is eliminated from the federal budget, we will all suffer. So therefore, regardless of political affiliation, please contact Congressman Higgins and Collins, as well as Senators Schumer and Gillibrand, and demand the Community Development Block Grant Program stay in existence. Thank you. Thank you. Those are just a few of the initiatives contained in the Initiatives for a Smart Economy version 2.0. There's many more. But we will also be working in other ways to benefit our community this year. For example, as we gather this evening, we are in the shadow of the iconic H.H. H. Richardson Towers in the story campus of what was once called the Buffalo State Asylum for the Insane when it opened in 1880. 137 years later, 
the towers and campus are experiencing new life with the opening of Hotel Henry, while we compassionately assist individuals struggling with mental illness and or addiction. I am proud to note our Department of Mental Health, led by Commissioner Michael Ranney, has secured grant funding of nearly $2.9 million for addiction treatment, prevention programs, and to support recovery. The Department of Mental Health also secured grants and awards in the amounts of $1.3 million to support children with serious emotional disturbances and adults with mental illness. Compassion and commitment have always been and will continue to be the hallmarks of our response to the issues of mental health and addiction in our community. I thank the Department of Mental Health for their good work. Thank you very much. Another department leading the way is our probation department. This year, probation added an officer to work with partners to locate juvenile runaways before they can get hurt or in trouble. The program's goals is to address the underlying issues that contributed to the juvenile running away, as well as locate and attempt to ensure the safety of the missing child. This will prevent the need for the issuance of a warrant and subsequent arrest detention, and ongoing court involvement of the juvenile. It is just one more way Erie County, as a government, is compassionately caring for our community. Now, one way we can strengthen families is by ensuring everyone has the opportunity to live where they want. There have been tremendous strides made towards repopulating downtown Buffalo, as long as you can afford a $1,500 a month greater rent. We need to ensure affordable housing exists for all in our community, especially in downtown Buffalo. Thank you. Thank you. In 2017, the Erie County Industrial Development Agency is undertaking a study of our regional IDA's adaptive reuse policy. When completed, the study will report, provide a report on the latest best practices and recommend specific policy changes. Erie County is committed to ensuring that the policy not only continues to add to the economic resurgence of the county, but ensures projects provide housing opportunities for people of all income brackets. I believe the report must include an affordable housing component in the policy. Buffalo has a long, sad history of being segregated real estate agents, banks, and others redline neighborhoods. We cannot allow further segregation of our community now based on wealth. If housing in downtown Buffalo is only affordable to the very wealthy, we as a community are poorer. Future adaptive rehouse, reuse housing projects must incl include components that promote affordable housing. The members of the ECIDA's board of directors must always remember we are not bankers, but representatives of the greater community. When we support projects that promote community development, we are promoting a stronger economy. It's just that simple as that. I hope you will join me in supporting an affordable housing component in our reuse policies. <laughs> well, to promote community development, we can ensure the health and well-being of our most senior members of our population. Recently, the story of how an 82-year-old woman was viciously attacked in her nursing home and subsequently died shocked our community. Ruth Murray was brutally beaten by another resident. The nursing facility initially failed to notify the state of the attack. It told her family she only sustained some minor lacerations to her face scratches to her nose, and a bruise on her back. Here is a picture of Ruth the day before with her da uh, daughter, Carol Cushney, who's here with us today. Thank you for being here, Carol. You don't want to see the picture of Ruth from after the attack, because in fact, Ruth had a collapsed lung, five fractured ribs, a fractured neck and vertebrae, and broken bones in her face. Stated, she died from her injuries. The picture, pictures are too shocking to see in public. No one should see their parent like that. No one. No person should be attacked, much less murdered in a nursing home. No family should ever be deceived by a nursing home about their loved one's condition. 
Ruth's family should not have been deceived by the nursing home. While New York State has primary responsibility for monitoring and punishing nursing homes, Erie County can take action. Carol, we are taking action. That's why last Friday, <laughs> that's why last Friday, I proposed three measures to protect our seniors. Hold nursing facilities accountable for mismanagement and promote transparency. At the local level, I proposed a law to require nursing homes to disclose their federal quality scores to potential residents and to allow the Commissioner of Senior Services to review incident reports. Erie County has also launched a website, it's live now, noting the rankings of area, area nursing homes so that families and consumers can find the best facility for their loved one before they're placed in the home. And lastly, I'm working with Assemblyman Sean Ryan to introduce legislation in Albany to increase the maximum fine for incidents like the one that cost Ruth Murray her life. We need to care for those who've spent so much of their lives caring for us. I hope the legislature will join me in supporting Ruthie's law and ensuring our loved ones receive the care they deserve and families are denied, are not denied the information they deserve to know. I hope the legislature will join us and pass this law this year. We must protect our seniors, but we also must take care and protect other vulnerable members of our community. The prophet Isaiah called us to share our bread with the hungry, shelter the oppressed and the homeless. Here, we are working to do those things and to compassionately help those in our community who are both the most vulnerable, increasingly the most ostracized. No one chooses to live a life of poverty or food insecurity, hoping and praying they'll be able to put food on the table for themselves and their children. No one looks forward to the difficult decision of either paying for heat or paying to eat, just as no one wants to live one paycheck away from disaster while working to keep their heads above water. Last year, I participated in the Rural Outreach Center's Poverty Challenge and performed the difficult calculus myself when I agreed to live on $6.36 of food per day for a week. Trust me, you're not going to be able to do it easily and find a health, eat a healthy meal every time. It was an eye-opening experience, illustrating to me the tough choices individuals living in poverty must make each and every day. I thank the Reverend Frank Cerny of the Rural Outreach Center and his group for the hard work they do every day to help the rural poor and helping me and others understand the true nature of poverty and what it means to be poor. The Erie County Poverty Committee, of which Reverend Cerny is a member and the Reverend Kinzer Pointer is the chair, has been working to identify and address the causes of poverty across the county, in our cities, our suburbs, and our rural areas. Poverty is a pervasive problem that does not respect age, gender, ethnicity, or geography. It is perniciously degrading our quality of life. It is a problem I highlighted in my 2014 State of the County Address, and one we are addressing head on. You see, the Poverty Committee has been meeting since I announced it in 2015 as one initiative of part of our Comprehensive Health and Human Services Plan, initiatives for a stronger community. The men and women of the Poverty Committee understand that the only way to address the problems of poverty is to attack its root causes. That is why they recommended to my administration to invest in two programs to reduce poverty through targeted investments in our youth. The first initiative, an expansion of the Help Me Grow program, screens children from birth to age three for developmental delays. Through increased knowledge about the social-emotional e development of infants and toddlers, Help Me Grow is ensuring a child receives the assistance needed before they enter school. If we wait till when they enter school, it's too late. It is also a valuable supplement to the Erie County Special Needs Division, which provides early intervention services for more than 5,000 children annually in our county. These funds will go towards expanding training of child care providers to recognize developmental delays and provide linkages to provide the support necessary to help the child overcome their challenges. The second initiative will provide enhanced skill training through the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families Summer Youth Employment Program currently administered by the Department of Social Services. 
I put the county's money behind these efforts when I included $500,000 in the county's 2017 budget for these programs. And I thank the legislature for agreeing with me that these programs are a wise investment of our tax dollars. Thank you. Thank you. While I thank the members of the Poverty Committee for their time and effort, the work of the committee is not done. The work of our community is not done to address this issue. There is much more we need to do. That is why I'm honored to be a member of the Executive Committee overseeing the Empire State Poverty Reduction Initiative for Buffalo. The team we have in place from both the public and not-for-profit sectors is hard at work to address the needs of poverty in our community. The county also serves on the Racial Equity Roundtable, an organization convened by the Community Foundation of Greater Buffalo to advance racial equality and promote change required to accelerate a shared regional prosperity. Its work is making a difference, but there's more that we can do. As such, later this spring, I will be convening a meeting of our partners to discuss poverty in our community, the whole community. This poverty summit will bring together leaders from government, not-for-profits, foundations, the faith-based community, and the private sector to discuss the issue of poverty in Erie County and what we need to do to address it. Now, one thing we can all do now, even before the Poverty Summit is convened, is contact Congressman Higgins and Collins and Senator Schumer and Gillibrand and tell them the Home Energy Assistance Program, HEAP, cannot be cut as proposed by the Trump administration. Thank you. He provides not only those living in poverty, but those just above the poverty line assistance so that they can heat their homes in winter. 92,000 families, 220,000 plus people rely on it. It must not be cut. I hope you will join me in making those calls and writing to our congressman. It is that important. Now, I am not naive. We won't eliminate all poverty in our community yet. I will not stand by cold-hearted and say we cannot do anything to address it. We can and we must do more if we are truly to become the community we know we can be. Similarly, we must heed the call to shelter the oppressed and displaced, the people who have nowhere left to turn and are in desperate need of refuge. No one wants to flee their homeland to avoid persecution or war, to take themselves and their families into an uncertain future abroad that was forced on them by violence in their own country. Our New Americans Committee is on the front line of what has become one of the major issues of our time, whether America is still a shining city on a hill, a beacon of light to those facing the specter of death elsewhere. While ignorance, fear, and xenophobia may dominate the toxic discourse of a vocal minority, in Erie County, we will steer our own course. You cannot have both broad shoulders and a narrow mind, just as we know that the endless repetition of fear-based lies and misrepresentation about immigrants and refugees cannot bear the light of truth. Our community is not defined by the vitriolic statements or actions of the very few, but the coming together of our people, regardless of race, religion, ethnicity, national origin, and sex, to say, united, we will not tolerate hatred and bigotry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We stand with those of all faiths and creeds. When hatred and bigotry targets one religion or race, it negatively affects all religions and races. When an individual, for no action of their own, is denied the opportunity to enjoy the freedoms we hold so dear, just because they were born in a particular place, each of us is less free. I have met refugees from Burma, Iraq, Somalia, yes, and even Syria. They have all come to Buffalo to start a new life. They are electricians, plumbers, engineers, teachers, mothers and fathers. They just want a chance at a safe life for themselves and their family. 
to deny others the same opportunity as our predecessors had is to diminish the legacy of our community and this land. Buffalo is known as the city of good neighbors. And while no community's past is perfect, the many nationalities that comprise the fabric of our community is what makes it as great as it is. Today, the melting pot that is the United States is threatened by misguided and prejudicial decrees, derided and diminished by an echo chamber media, and in danger of being forgotten by the very people who have lived with, enjoyed the very freedoms they would withhold from others. President John F. Kennedy told us, the great enemy of the truth is very often not the lie, deliberate, contrived, and dishonest, but the myth, persistent, persuasive, and unrealistic. He also said, too often we hold fast to the cliches of our forebears. We subject all facts to a prefabricated set of interpretations. We enjoy the comfort of opinion without the discomfort of thought. We must always be on guard against those who would casually and cruelly promote deceit as a counterbalance to truth while disregarding facts in favor of fallacies. Make no mistake about it. Erie County will never turn its back on people who are in need. We will never allow darkness to overcome light and will never stop listening to voices crying out for help. Thank you. Thank you. We helped those fleeing persecution in the past. We will today and we will in the future. We can be the example to the world that the shining city on a hill still exists in America, in a place called Buffalo and Erie County. I thank the members of the New Americans Committee for their important work and for being a light in the darkness, a voice of compassion in a moment of dire need, and for helping our newest citizens play a part in the continued renewal of our county and our nation. Thank you. Tonight, we have celebrated our county's achievements, recognized our challenges, and identified avenues for needed change. Much like our forefathers and mothers who followed the American dream here, created the vibrant industries and neighborhoods we enjoy today, we understand that building a better county has always been a community effort. We cannot afford to retreat into short-sighted mindsets that pit communities and peoples against each other, whether it is over immigration or addressing poverty. We must reaffirm we are stronger together. Today, more than ever, we must nurture that sense of commonality and strengthen the ties that bind us together as a community. The proud heritage we embody in 2017 was created with input from people of every color and creed, every nationality and ethnicity, all hoping and dreaming that Erie County was the place for their own American success story. Working together, we are seeing heights we could not have imagined a decade ago. The renaissance that is the new Buffalo, the new Erie County is real, but there's still much more work that needs to be done to ensure that all of our residents can enjoy the fruits of this renaissance. As noted, history is being made in Erie County today. A history that builds on the rich legacy left to us by prior generations. In industry, education, public health, environmental protection, and many other areas, we are standing on the shoulders of our predecessors while forging ahead with a vision for a new, vibrant, and inclusive Erie County. We remain on the right track and will continue to face our problems head on, working with partners towards solutions that are agreeable to most, if not all. I remain open to working with the legislature to resolve our tough problems. I am stepping forward and they must too. Now is the time for leadership, not partisanship. We owe it to past generations who worked so hard to get to this point and future generations who are counting on us to do the same. Let's not let them down. Ladies and gentlemen, let's continue to work together to make an even better Erie County for our children and grandchildren. Our future depends on it. Thank you for joining me here tonight. May God bless you, Erie County, and the United States of America.
Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.